Welcome back in. You're watching Wisconsin Women, and today we are talking about kind of a tough topic. We're going to tackle estate planning, and for many that can bring some nerves to the plate because there's a lot to know. Today, though, we have an expert who's here to help us navigate this one. We've got Julia Walsh. She is an estate planning attorney with Murphy Desmond. Julia, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. And it is a pleasure to chat with you because we have a lot to navigate for today's conversation. So let's start with some sort of details about, you know, if a person is married, there may be viewers at home who are, are in a situation like this. If they have children from a prior relationship, let's talk about what happens if they pass away without an estate plan. Of course, a fear for many. Absolutely. So. In general, under Wisconsin law, when a spouse passes away, their assets are going to pass entirely to their surviving spouse. However, that is not the case if there are children from a prior relationship. If that is the case, generally speaking, everything is going to pass 50% to the surviving spouse and 50% to the surviving children and or grandchildren from previous relationships. Now, unfortunately, that does commonly lead to disputes about who is going to be in charge of the estate, who is going to have access to the accounts, how is the property going to be divided, and a variety of other matters. So estate planning is particularly important in second and subsequent marriages when there are children from a prior relationship. And because there's so much to navigate and there, there's really a lot of variables, it sounds like, what are the most important considerations that you can kind of cover for us here for married couples when estate planning? Sure, so the first important consideration is children and or grandchildren from a prior relationship. Some factors to consider are, are they adults or are they minors? And if they are minors, who are they going to live with if their parents pass away? Do any of them have any special needs that require long-term planning? Next, they need to consider children from the current marriage who are typically younger and require financial support for a longer duration of time. Then they need to consider how are they going to divide their assets so that their surviving spouse and children from all relationships are taken care of fairly and adequately. And some of these assets include retirement accounts, life insurance policy, but also tangible property, such as the family home and fam family heirlooms. Finally, they should consider any business planning. So if they do want to transfer the ownership of a business after they pass away, at Murphy Desmond, we have attorneys who specialize in estate planning and business succession planning. And these are just some of the important considerations. But yeah, to your point, you know, you having somebody specialize in these different areas because there are a lot of things to consider. And we're talking a lot about assets right now, but let's talk a little bit about debt, if you would. So what happens if a deceased spouse has a lot of debt? Does that affect the division of property? Yes. So planning for debt and how to satisfy that debt is extremely important. And there are different types of debt. So there is debt brought to the marriage, but there is also debt accrued during the marriage. There is secured debt and unsecured debt, so mortgages versus credit cards. And generally speaking, most if not all debts will need to be satisfied first. So that is before anyone receives any distributions. Okay, so let's talk a little bit when, you know, we're thinking about planning here and planning of course is important. So let's talk about the documents that go alongside some of the things we're talking about here. Does that help really avoid disputes uh, among beneficiaries and help, you know, which is the goal, right, is to stay outside of the court system? Sure. So probate, in essence, is when someone passes away, the administration of their estate with the court overseeing and approving every step of the process. Most families and individuals don't want the court making those decisions for them. So estate planning attorneys can help draft documents to avoid the court system and to avoid probate. Some examples of these are powers of attorney, setting up a trust, and marital property agreements. So powers of attorney help keep the court involvement limited or the court not involved at all if you need someone to make financial and healthcare decisions for you if you're incapacitated during life. So you nominate an individual that you trust to help make those decisions. Most families use these during conditions such as Alzheimer's or if someone is about to undergo a major surgery. Setting up a trust 
is setting up an entity to hold and control how your assets are distributed without court supervision. Marital property agreements can be done before or after marriage. So a postnuptial or a prenuptial agreement to classify property and make sure that the entire estate does not need to be divided upon the death of a spouse. And these are just some examples of the documents. Well, a lot to know, Julia. We've got to head to break, we've got to wrap up, but can you give us a quick takeaway for those who are married or plan to get married that have children from a prior relationship? Sure, so every client situation and individual is unique. And Wisconsin is a marital property state, so it's particularly important to set up an estate plan, especially in second and subsequent marriages. And here at Murphy Desmond, we love what we do. We're happy to help. We want you to reach out so that we can avoid your families battling through the court system. Yeah, good to have an expert on your side, someone who's been through this many times before. Julia, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. We'll be back with more after this break.